I'd like to start by asking you, have you ever wondered why? Like, why are the seeds on a sunflower arranged in perfect spirals? Or how does the forest optimize resources for survival? Or is there sentient life in the universe? A four-year-old asks, on average, 390 questions a day. And that's a question every two and a half minutes. So no wonder why parents of toddlers are so tired. But this amazing amount of curiosity will tend to taper off as people grow older. And I just don't understand why it has to. I was one of those toddlers, too, and I could never truly stop asking questions. I found my outlet for this through science fair projects, but there's many ways to go about it. And I always end up with more questions than I have answers, which is something that I love. My earliest elementary school project that I really did was concerning the beginning of the universe. And I checked in my school's library's resources and online, but I still couldn't quite find the answers that I was looking for. And it was the first time that my curiosity wasn't satisfied by books, parents, teachers, and the internet. So I decided to email NASA to ask them a few questions. And because I was eight, I didn't even consider that they wouldn't get back to me. But they did. And this was the first time that I learned that the wider scientific community was an extremely welcoming place. And as I've grown older, I've learned that my curiosity can allow me to see something with fresh eyes compared to those who see the same thing every single day, like experts. And the amount of responses that I get is amazing. I share what I've found or why I need their help. And it piques their curiosity to see someone so young working in a field uh, of theirs. And because they're part of the educating community, they just want to extend what they have taught their grad students to you. My very first proper science fair project was in grade five, and I was studying patterns in plants. I wanted to see how, I wanted to see, I went to, I went out into a little field near my house and measured six or seven trees with dad as my trusty field assistant. And I was trying to see if the branch angles grew in a specific pattern. I taped all over pine cones and pineapples to see if they grew in spirals. And my apparatus was not very um, scientific. It had a large cardboard protractor, as you can see in the picture there, and a soggy logbook that had been dropped in the snow too many times. And as my projects have progressed, my questions have gotten deeper, and my planning has gotten better, admittedly, not going out in minus 15 degrees. But I still am fueled by asking questions. And if I don't know something, I try my best to learn it. Not everything goes well all the time, and things fail. But that's OK, because if something goes wrong, it's best to flaunt it instead of hiding it. Two years ago, I was doing a project related to aspen trees. And part of it involved doing some DNA testing in the lab, which was really exciting for me. The first three samples went really, really well. So I went off and did another nine over a full day and a five hour period and let them develop. And absolutely nothing happened, because all of them were complete duds. But that's OK, because despite the failure of my DNA work, my scientific process that I followed was sound, and therefore my project ended up being fairly successful. Some people say that everything has already been done. But that's just not true. If anything, we've barely scratched the surface of science and what we can learn from the natural world. So I say that all of us have a unique perspective, and all of us can bring something new to the table. And this is why I love STEM research, and hope you do too, because it gives us all the opportunity to ask these questions and to fuel our curiosity. Thank you.